My name is Maria. I am a recovering compulsive eater. I weigh and measure three yummy meals a day from the Cambridge Gray Sheet. I write them down uh, in detail, uh, even the herbs and the seasonings, and I commit them to my sponsor. I do not eat anything in between, no matter what. God is the most important choice that I make in my life. Um, without which I would not have a life um, or abstinence for that matter. Um, with my higher power, as I define as God, I have been opened up um, to a gift, even though uh, I still don't fully believe that I'm worthy. I am 52 years old. Uh, and going through menopause. I am hot. I am cold. I have trouble sleeping. I am moody and irritable. And it does not matter because I have such a, an abundant life in between my meals. Um, and those boundaries are such a game changer. Today is day 241 without sugar, grains, and alcohol. Um, and I just wanna, I wanna welcome the newcomers and fellows. You know, we are on this call from California, South Africa, Ireland, Texas, and we all um, may be different people, different ethnicities and, and what have you in different locales, but we have a common story and Furthermore, I think we have a common solution, right? That's what ties us together. And so mine is a story just like your story. It involves seduction of food and delusion and deception because food, the disease has always been cunning, uh, baffling. It's been insidious um, for me. And I think from the moment I realized that there was a gaping hole in my childhood that I wanted to fill, I filled it with an imaginary friend named Tracy. I filled it with all sorts of treats that we don't eat. And I also uh, seem to fill it by creating an inflated sense of self. Um, and I just today have to thank God for Gray Sheet and this fellowship because the trifold solution, both um, the spiritual, the physical, and the mental solution um, in this community around the globe has really um, taken root in my life and, and helped me to write a new script. I really feel like every day we get this blank page in our lives and we are writing in ink, right? We can't erase the choices um, and the things we say and the decisions we make, right? But we get a new sheet each day and that I get to write my narrative now just is beyond my wildest dreams because the food, the food, the food used to write the narrative for me. I was born in St. Thomas in the West Indies and my parents were hardworking uh, new immigrants to America. Um, and in the vacuum in, my, in our house, when I was home alone, oftentimes I, the loneliness was so encompassing for me. I, I really feel like I was this 10 gallon kid born into a pint sized family that just really couldn't handle my volume. I wanted to sing and dance and I didn't hear I love you. And I wanted to live the lives that I saw kids living on, on TV. And so um, I, I, I lived in desperation in my childhood and the self-medication that I chose was food and bags and boxes. And I, I would sneak it and um, sugary beverages. Um, I cried often, I remember too. I, and I remember having tons and tons of cavities. It's, it's amazing how much money I've put into um, dental care. Uh, but I remember having at least 10 or 11 cavities and waking up with wrappers in my bed and uh, then, you know, the lying. Um, and so once I reached puberty, I thought, oh, that's not enough. Let me make myself feel better by becoming a people pleaser. And um, then there was also some um, promiscuity. And I, I think um, for me, I became really rageful. I was really angry that 
I, that this was my life. Uh, and I, I could not, I could not, I tried so many times, I could not stop eating. Uh, I, I tried self-help books and I tried countless diets, um, namely like Weight Watchers. And I tried self, um, I tried fasting, intermittent fasting. I tried um, uh, diuretics and x lax and oh, it was, it was nightmarish. The cycle uh, had such a stronghold on my life. Um, and I, I just collapsed. I remember distinctly just collapsing and feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. And I, I can't do this anymore if I expect to live. And all the while I'm in graduate school, I think it was after my master's degree um, and getting married and having children and still being in the cycle of hitting every drive through uh, on the way to any destination that I um, thought this is going to be my life. So I'm just gonna be a big woman and I'm gonna make it beautiful and that's okay. Um, and the binging then continued um, for another decade or so until one night of desperation, I, I begged, I said, God, please just, take it all from me, all of the sins of my mouth, the binging, the rage, the uh, gossiping, the gluttony. If you can just remove this, I, uh, I just need to know what, how, when, where I was ready to sign and pay any amount. And I just surrendered because I didn't have anything else to give. And it's in that surrender that I found freedom. In that surrender, I could put the food down um, only by the grace of God. And so I, I, I said that that was it. <laughs> like it, was, it, was, um, it was a miracle. The physical cravings didn't diminished in maybe a week or two. As I weighed, as I measured, and that sacred space in my kitchen of writing it down, of journaling, of making outreach calls, uh, attending meetings. I attended a meeting every day for the first six months or so and would continue to do so. Only I just finished my school year as a teacher and I um, needed to turn to two-way prayer and because my hours were really late. And so I almost immediately felt my higher power instilling in me new ideas, new wisdoms, um, new desires. Uh, this gift of abstinence for me became a measure of self-love. I looked in the mirror and I finally saw the real me as it seemed like pieces of that inflated self were beginning to fall off. You know, I could reach for the fine china and put my food on it and not wait for company. I could reach for clothing that you reserve for a special event, right? And all the while, my sizes were shrinking. When I came into the room, and this is my first 12-step program, I weighed 225 pounds at 5'2", and I hurt um, my knees especially. My ankles were swollen. I was pre-diabetic, um, and I wasn't a kind person. And today, uh, after 241 days, I weigh a hundred and maybe 55. I, I weigh in again tomorrow with all of you. Um, and I've gone down from a size 18 to a size eight and I am glowing and I smile so much that it hurts. And I, I have developed intimacy like that was foreign for me. And um, things that I just so enjoy because now I have four hours in between these three delicious meals that where I get to live a life that is boundless. I repair my Jeep Wrangler. I read and lay in the sun. I, 
I write poetry. And I'm like, who is this woman? What? Five minutes, Maria. Five minutes. Thank you so very much, Catherine. I am just, I, I am living this gift um, of abstinence and I'm learning so much about the real me because in a way I'm giving birth to who I am supposed to be living in a body in which I'm supposed to be every time I weigh and measure. I am shifting myself almost from the margins. I lived on the margins of my life and I'm moving myself to the center and food prep is, is this like holy ground for me. I don't want anyone to talk to me. I, I just want my skin scale and I have talk about scales. I might have about five or six. There's one in my trunk, one at, at school, one in my husband's car, or, you know, one in the kitchen, tons of batteries, you know, analog scales, digital scales. I am prepared because I need to protect my food. I once went on a field trip and the bus broke down and we were in a dangerous area and we couldn't get anything that was in the under um, storage. And there went my meals. But you know what? I have gray shooters around the world that there is always a way to be abstinent. Like this is, this is beyond incredible to me. And so, you know, I, I live uh, this, it's very legalistic for me, one day at a time. My 4.0 means that. It doesn't mean 3.9. It doesn't mean 4.1. And I, I just surrender. I, I, I pray for willingness. I have um, taken a course on two-way prayer and I'm teaching it to others. Again, who is this person? Um, I, I read from the big book each day and I have this, this prayer because I refer sometimes to my higher power as Abba. And I started like this morning, I, I almost say the same one. I read how it works daily um, because I have to be tethered. I have to be tethered to the herd because my disease is doing push-ups. I know it. And the only time I look at at someone else's plate, I know, oh, it's been four hours, huh? Hmm, it's time to eat because their food isn't delicious. It's not nutritious. My food is. And so I know that it's time for me to get um, opening up my glass dishes because I bought the fanciest all Pyrex. And like I have hold, I hold nothing back. I'm eating with silver, uh, silverware, like real silver. And I have napkins and I, it's just an amazing life for me because um, I don't want to lose my freedom. So I, I said this morning, Abba, I am pregnant with expectation. I want to commune with you today in this sacred space. As I seek your face, reveal to me more of who you are and who you want me to be. You are an infinite God. Um, which I learned from the big book. And may your presence be so tangible in my meeting space that I don't want to return to my daily activity. I long for more of you. And um, so allow me to take you along with me on today's journey. That intimacy keeps me tethered. The two-way prayer, I have been in two AWOLs. Um, I am trying to start a meeting around two-way prayer. It is just a, the cornerstone of my recovery. Uh, every time I accept an outreach call or I make a call, I desperately want to hear from my higher power because without God, I would not be living this life. I, I, I couldn't do it. I've tried. Um, I heard a quote once that I would like to get scrawled on the wall in my classroom. It's always the victor in any war that gets to write the history. And I just love that because I'm getting to write my narrative. And, and so I, I write, I listen, I yearn, I, and I return daily with thanksgiving and this open heart to receive love. Newcomers keep coming back. It really, really works. I can't believe that. I just want to scream. Like, I'm wearing heels. Like, what? Who? I, I, I don't want to um, cycle back into this is just joy and gratefulness. My cup runneth over. I took an expo marker last thing before I end. And I wrote on my bathroom mirror um, that it is easier to get out of Egypt than to get Egypt out of you. What is your Pharaoh? And each morning I face that question because I, I need to acknowledge that just these are not rose colored glasses. I am living a deliberate, intentional 
life of surrender. And just for today, I don't worry about next year. I don't worry about five years from now. I plan, I prepare, I pray, and I pray, and I pray those meals um, because it has given me a new life. Thank you so much, fellows, for inviting me. Thank you so much, Gracie. And with that, I will pass.